it is a stunning morning. It's a spontaneous one, to be honest, guys. I uh, initially wanted to go up this sort of mound here, Wharton Crag that you could see behind me. Um, it was forecast really heavy fog, um, but it's not sort of materialised. It's there's this kind of thin. I won't even go as far as even calling it mist. It's just like this thin haze across some of the fields. I'll tell you what, it's absolutely gorgeous, but it just means there's a little bit of a plan B really, which I don't know. It's not always a, a bad thing, I wouldn't say. Sometimes they kind of work out better than plan A. So that's what I'm hoping for this morning, fingers crossed. It's just like the, the, the world this morning, everything, the atmosphere, the environment, the conditions, the location, everything's just as good as it gets almost. You know, not necessarily for photography, but just for being out and about. It's clear out, there's a stunning sunrise, there's a um, sort of frost over the fields. It's still, I can hear all the birds here near Silverdale. Oh man, there's what I think is a proper full moon setting so there's definitely a lot to work with with the camera So it is just one of those mornings that make you glad to be alive. There's geese flying away in the background. Oh, look how still it is here. It's absolutely amazing. So off in the background there, um, I don't know, the light's just sort of starting to catch. If I can try and zoom in a little bit to show you. It's just catching those trees off there in the background. You see that there? Um, wow. Absolutely amazing. And then the moon um, is off there somewhere. And I've actually got the long lens out, um, which is the first time in a while actually, especially in these sorts of landscapes. Wow, oh, it looks absolutely amazing. And it's a mixture of really trying to capture that light as it's hitting the trees off in the background, but trying to get this river and even one or two of these little sort of yellow colored reeds down here in the foreground as well. But I've taken one or two different sort of photographs, really. Um, so the first image is I'm zoomed right back out at 55 mil, um, and I suppose even though I'm using the long lens, it's you're catching quite a lot, quite a lot of different elements. So it's dare I say it, it's fairly wide <laughs> still, or it feels like it. Um, I think it's more because if you look there, I'm shooting across the way, across the landscape. So there's still a lot in the frame. But yeah, see how I'm getting a few of these reeds down here in the foreground. And then, obviously, uh, the reflections of the river. And then the fence posts and the fields, you know, the trees. So there is quite a lot to it. Um, so yeah, them settings will be fine. ISO 100 f8 and 150th of a second. Um, I'm focusing the which is them kind of reeds, but the reeds that are across the river, near the fence post. I don't know, I just think they're the most important part of the image. Uh, there's like a little white sign just there. Um, I quite like it. At first I was trying to take the photograph in a way that it wasn't in the frame. I don't know, I just quite like it. I think it's because we've got the reflection as well. Um, grab one here now, see how this looks. But like I say, I've taken one or two already. Um, whilst the moon was still at the top of them trees as well. Oh, that's amazing. And then the second shot I took was zoomed pretty far in. Yeah, it must have been about 250 mil and it was similar enough, but there's no point in taking it now. But I'll put it up on the screen. It's just, we had the moon just setting behind some of them hills there. Whoa, what a morning. What a morning. To be fair, I could stay, it's one of them where I could just stay in one spot like this and just fire off images across the fields with the telephoto lens. I'll tell you what, I might do just that. <laughs> um, let's keep walking, see what else we can find. I'm gonna head down towards that bridge there. Mm. 
it's amazing. Exactly like I just said then, it is honestly, it's one of them you can just keep the long lens on and just fire off shots off in the distance. The light and the conditions are so nice. I'm just getting this kind of, um, this kind of vista that goes around Warden Crag and it's looking back towards Ingleborough over in Yorkshire and uh, just looking through some of these reeds here. I'm just playing around with depth of field really and trying to grab a shot of it. Um, but it looks pretty cool. So I'm stopping down to, um, let's have a look what it's going to be. Something about f4.8, somewhere around there, depending on the focal length of course. And then, oh, just want to try and lens cap. Make sure you take your lens cap off guys. Some of the best advice that I give on this channel. There we go. So I'm focusing actually on the reeds here in the foreground. And it looks beautiful because the light is so variable throughout the whole sort of frame from here right in the foreground we've got the reeds the sun hasn't come up and over water and crag yet so they're kind of in this shade but then Ingleborough in the background is kind of illuminated um, by that morning sun so let's have a look oh that looks absolutely gorgeous and then because of course we're shooting at quite a wide aperture Ingleborough is kind of blurry off in the background as well ISO 100 f4.8 and one sixtieth of a second. Let's grab that now. How's it look? Absolutely glorious and something really, really different for me as well. Oh. So another stop and another shot with the telephoto lens you can see here now the light is on the land look at that the sun is well and truly arrived up and over water crag oh it's just spectacular honestly what a morning i just don't understand why there's no one here I just, look at it it's free it's about 20 minutes from home oh man this is good for the mind. Let me tell you, if you haven't done this sort of thing, I mean, I never used to, to be honest. And of course, if people aren't into this sort of thing, then they're not into it, it's that simple. But just give it a go, man. Not even with the camera, just look at it. The sun's come up, it's frosty. There's a few little sheep kicking about. It's still, there's no one here. This is so peaceful. Ah, oh, man. Right, so, like I said, telephoto lens again. And um, yeah, again, it's really just a case of I'm using the telephoto lens, I suppose, as my feet, <laughs> you know. Um, I don't need to move too much. I'm still, I've only walked five minutes from where I parked up. Um, and it's just working an absolute charm. So I'm zooming across the landscape this time, I'm really just trying to make the most of the light that's kind of coming in from the right hand side of the frame there, painting the fields, and then we've got this tiny little gate, let me try and show you here. See there, that little gate, you just love the way he's catching the light, and then the sort of compression effect that we're getting with them hills in the background I like, obviously because we're using the telephoto lens. And I'm going to finish the photograph around about there, so I'm not getting that single tree there, I'm just getting this kind of bunch of trees <laughs> on the left hand side. Um, but yeah, it's, it's working out well. I'm, I'm liking the way that it looks. Um, just brighten that up a bit so you can see. There we go. Right, so we're zooming across the landscape. Like I said, ISO 100 F8 and 1 200th of a second. I am going to focus on that little gate, actually. There we go. Um, oh, that is just spectacular. So I'll get everything off the screen. In fact, I'll get the level up and I'll get everything off the screen. And that's it, simple as that. So see how I'm cutting out that one single tree on the right hand side? I just prefer that. So we've got the little gate, the trees on the left hand side, which are balanced nicely by all them peaks on the right hand side. The sky is going to be beautiful, as long as I don't overexpose it. 
And of course, the light that's painted in those fields. Perfect histogram. Oh, just absolutely gorgeous. Oh, man. I'm going to keep going. There's no reason to stop yet. I'm going to follow, I've never been here before either. I'm going to follow this footpath that's running around here and see what else I can find. And it's probably going to be another leng long lens shot, guys. Oh, living the dream. <laughs> So I was just thinking back then to when I first, I guess when I like first started getting into landscape photography and um, I remember it was all about like wide angle or that, that was my kind of obsession. <laughs> um, I guess my first lens was the kit lens that I got with the Nikon D3100, which was an 18 to 55 millimeter. So even on a crop sensor, you know, 18 millimeter was always um, a fairly wide angle. It was decent. You could, you could definitely get sort of, um, you could capture wide vistas on the side of fells and things like that. And you could get some nice wide angle effect photographs and stuff, you know. But it was like this obsession. I wanted wider. <laughs> and I remember when I got my Takina 11 to 16 when I lived in New Zealand and I absolutely loved it. And I, I still do, <coughs> excuse me, I still do. And I still love that focal range. Um, I love shooting wide at 11 mil. I think it absolutely has its uses. But what I really wanted to say is, you know, um, I think it's a bit of a cliche that the wide angle lens is the, uh, the landscape photographer's lens. Yes, it has its uses, but I mean, you've seen this morning and you probably see all the time on YouTube and in magazines and on the internet, on forums, things like that, that the telephoto lens as well is absolutely invaluable, really, for landscape photography. I certainly wouldn't be without mine. Um, and it's so, obviously, it's so incredibly versatile. I absolutely love mine when I'm in the Lake District, um, up on the side of fells and I'm shooting across you know, looking to different fells, picking out shapes. But even things like this this morning, you know, where, like I said before, I was still filling frames with comp all, like, completely different elements. You know, the light, the fields. Um, I've had reeds in the foreground, trees. I've had the moon, <laughs> all sorts. So you can still fill the frame when you're using a telephoto lens, you know. Oh, absolutely stunning. Let me show you this now. I'm probably going to have to get the camera out again. Look at this. Absolutely ridiculous. Look at that. I'm gonna grab a shot here. Give me a minute, I'll get set up. So I see honestly it's blowing my mind a bit this morning. It's just spectacular. The light is amazing. I was just thinking about something else then. One thing that I love about kind of this time of year, um when it's like I guess it's just winter or even like the merge between winter and spring. But when the land is actually quite colourless, um, oh, I don't know, there's something about it that I really like. It's like it's like naturally desaturated. And I think it just looks so, so gorgeous, especially on a frosty morning, but then you get the sun. Imagine like a sunrise in the middle of summer. It's vibrant, absolute orange everywhere, which is brilliant. You know, some it can be made of that. It's got its own pros and cons. But it's like... The best way I can describe it, especially with the frost on the land as well, it's like the light is white. Like, really, honestly, colourless. And I love it. I've found I've been really desaturating my images recently. Um, just to try and match what I'm seeing with my eyes, to be honest. So, we've got the old emergency tripod out again. <laughs> um, and I've still got the long lens on. It's the story of the long lens today, it really is. So, I've, um, I'm shooting in a landscape orientation. And I think I'm quite wide. Yeah, I'm, I'm at 55 mil, so you know, not wide by the old Takina terms, 11 mil. But um, just the mist that is lingering, or I guess it's starting to rise across the way there. And honestly, two things really that are making this image for me. Well, there's a lot of things that are making this image between the light and the, and the mist and stuff. But here in the foreground, we've got this fence that's kind of cutting across, sort of from left to right, especially as it is in the composition. And it's just got all these like dew droplets on um, all of the sort of barbed wire and the metal wires. Oh, it's just really helping to tell a story. And of course, because the light is coming in from here, it's 
oh, it's just so pleasing. It's lighting up all the little droplets. And then secondly, down here in the foreground as well, we've got these like long shadows from all the fence posts. It's incredible, honestly, it really is. So we're at ISO 100, F8, and 1 640th of a second. Somehow, I don't know what's going on with the Nikon. Um, it's The histogram's fine. I thought I was going to have to bracket like mad here, but I guess it's still, you know, the sun's only just come up. It's not like it's midday sunlight. Um, plus, and I've, I've, I've said this recently, um, as I'm looking at the sky there now, it's so bright. that, that It is overexposed. So I'm not going to fight to make sure the exposure of that sky is perfect and it's balanced and it's got all the detail in. Because to me, not always, but sometimes that can start getting a little bit unnatural, at least look unnatural, just for my taste. I'm not saying you should go out and do the same or that people that do that are wrong. I just think sometimes you don't always have to get that HDR look, you know. This, what is beautiful about this scene in many ways is that the sky is so overexposed and we've got that bright white sunlight. Um, and it's the details in the land and the mist that's making it for me here. Um, ridiculous. Hope you guys like this photograph. What a morning! Whoa. nice day in general so yeah I've really urged you to give that a go anyway what I was on about with telephoto lenses before um, the, 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 the best point I can make is really try and think almost in terms of your focal length as you're walking around and the more that you use a certain lens um, so mine like 55 to 300 for example you just kind of you start getting this like sixth sense almost of looking being able to look across the landscape it's just a skill that you develop of looking across the landscapes and being able to pick out little sections and saying, oh yeah, I'll be able to zoom right in there with that my particular lens. Uh, I'll be able to compose it like that. And you can kind of do it all in your head without even having to get your camera out. And then of course, you've got that option as well. That's the kind of middle ground before you actually take the shot is get your camera out, use the viewfinder or the LCD screen, whatever you prefer to do. And then just play around, zoom across the landscape. And it's brilliant because you can really work with shapes and things like that. I, keep, I say that a lot, shapes, that is one thing that honestly I'm always looking for. Um, best example today has been like, you know, the shot with Ingleborough with the mountain. I'll pop it up on the screen here. Um, yeah, it was Ingleborough that I spotted in the background, that beautiful anvil shape, the flat top. And then I started thinking about foreground. It goes back to a video that I made two or three weeks ago when I was saying start with the background. And that's very true as well with the telephoto lens, not just wide. You know, what is it in the background that's capturing your eye? Can you zoom into it? Do you even want to incorporate any foreground? Is it nicer as a straight shot? It's just fun. Honestly, it's just fun playing around with it. And same as anything, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Right. Cup of coffee. Right, you know, the coffee. I'm not I'm, the tea's for later on. It's because I usually do my sunset videos, so I ain't having coffee in the evenings. Cup of coffee, I think, this morning. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. What a special morning. I hope you enjoyed it. Get out and use your telephoto lenses. <laughs> and um, yeah, thanks a lot for tuning in. Hope you're keeping well. And uh, yeah, as always, if you could give the video a thumbs up, that always really helps out my content. Thank you so much. And I'll see you on the next adventure. Out. Out.